week, we took a look at the religious right, those coveted evangelical voters that conservatives spent decades pandering to, only to be dumped just before November prom for a heretical billionaire bully who only says the word God when he's ejaculating on a pile of money. <laughs> Many people think the new religious right arose as a response to the 1973 Roe v. Wade decision, but that's not true, and I know because I was there. Sammy B. here at the Supreme Court, which has just ruled 7-2 to two that the right to privacy extends to abortion. No jive. The decision was endorsed by the Southern Baptist Convention, whose official news outlet said, religious liberty, human equality, and justice are advanced by the Supreme Court abortion decision. So there you have it, folks. The Republican-appointed justices have spoken. Abortion is legal, the debate has been settled, and we'll never have to argue about it again. Are we clear? Clear. All right, who wants to have unprotected sex? Very free with my body. Now, abortion wouldn't appear on most Protestants' ultrasound until a few years later, when leaders like Jerry Falwell and Paul Weyrich, having mobilized conservative Christians to defend segregationist Bible colleges, were casting about for another issue to keep the movement going. They held a conference call to discuss the prospect of other political activities. Several people suggested possible issues and finally, a voice on the end of one of the lines said, how about abortion? I'm sorry, wait. Were they founding a movement or deciding what toppings to get on their pizza? <laughs> hey, guys, you know what? Why don't we just order abortion? If people don't like it, they can pick it off. <laughs> now they just needed to tell the rest of us abortion was bad. Luckily, they were about to get an assist from a talented young sci-fi filmmaker. No, not that one. This one, who agreed to talk with us. My name is Frank Schaefer. And uh, one of the things that I did back in the day when I was young was help found, start, begin what became known as the pro-life movement. It is the single greatest regret of my life. We made a film series called Whatever Happened to the Human Race featuring my dad, Francis Schaefer, and Dr. Siebert Koop. Two pals who shared a love of theology and novelty beards, plus a 20-something raised on Fellini films. What could go wrong? <laughs> Satyricon used other powerful visual metaphors like baby dolls scattered on the site of biblical Sodom or callously chucked down a chute by an evil factory worker. Worst I Love Lucy reboot ever. <laughs> they also put a doll in a rabbit cage to represent the slippery slope to human experimentation. Oh my God, holy shit, that's not a doll. Who let you put their naked toddler in a cage? We borrowed the babies from local Christians at some church in Van Nuys, California, who brought them to the studio. Oh God, okay, 10 bucks says that kid is still making films in the valley. <laughs> They even made their own schoolhouse rock. Well, more of a homeschool house rock. In olden days, a glimpse of stocking was looked on as something shocking. Now, heaven knows anything goes. The only thing creepier than that cartoon was the breakfast cereal tie-in. <laughs> The chinstrap twins took their abortion fantasia to churches across the country where it flopped. Abortion was that thing Catholics worried about. Most evangelical leaders didn't want to have anything to do with it. They wanted to just preach Jesus. They thought politics was dirty. They didn't want anything to do with it. We had to talk them into it. And one of the people that helped us do that was Jack Kemp. He brought 50 congressmen and senators in, including Henry Hyde and Bob Dole and a whole bunch of other people, and gave it a lot of respectability. According to Frank, it all came together on Congressional Republican Movie Night. By the way, the little rascal short before the film gave them another idea for the GOP platform. Now, what do you say if we form a new club and call it the He-Man Woman Hairs Club? Oh, he didn't age so well. Why didn't his hands grow? 
have gotten abortion into the Republican platform and evangelical churches, religious right leaders like Falwell spent the next two decades relentlessly pushing the message that abortion caused everything from breast cancer to 9-11. The abortionists have got to bear some burden for this because uh, God will not be mocked and when we destroy 40 million little innocent babies, we make God mad. I point the thing in their face and say, you help this happen. Sounds crazy, but let's face it, invading Planned Parenthood in response to 9-11 would have been only slightly less stupid than invading Iraq. <laughs> After a generation spent successfully riling up the base with feverish anti-abortion rhetoric, it's no surprise that the divisive issue has divided many from their own sanity. Since 1977, self-appointed soldiers of God have visited abortion providers with 185 incidents of arson, 42 bombings, 100 acid attacks, 26 attempted murders, and 11 actual murders. You know, pro-life stuff. <laughs> Plus, the countless thousands inspired to be super annoying assholes. They're murdering babies in that corner through abortion! Please, someone call the police! They're murdering babies through abortion! If you don't want to listen to me, we'll listen to the Holy Bible. The Holy Bible is against abortion. Fine, let's look at everything the Bible says about abortion. Oh, look, there it is in the book of Doesn't Exist, right next to the verse condemning lesbians. Abortion isn't found anywhere in God's law, but now it's everywhere in our law. As Margaret Mead said, never doubt that a cynical conference call and a fundamentalist faux Fellini film festival can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. We'll be right back.